Hey guys, uh, Juicebox here. Welcome back to another Flight Simulator 10 acceleration video. And in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, the autopilot, uh, how to navigate using the GPS, and how to configure your radio stack so that you can use the ILS frequencies to perform an auto landing. So let's get right into it. Okay guys, currently we are in Princess Juliana Airport uh, with the uh, airport code as uh, Tango November Charlie Mike. Uh, you if you guys want to check this airport out, go ahead. It only has one runway, a very dangerous uh, uh, takeoff and approach because of the short runway and the mountain that mountain that's around it. So, before we take off guys, always make sure there are a few things uh, to check for before you take off, especially we got to configure the autopilot. If you guys want to use the autopilot, regardless of VFR or IFR, autopilot is very handy. Let's go jump into the uh, virtual cockpit. Okay, here you can see the autopilot, uh, the, oh sorry, the main panel. Let's just bring the main panel up front by pressing shift plus one. Okay, so this is the main panel here. The main panel has a couple of uh, buttons uh, and uh, displays. The nav GPS button, the, P the three glass displays, the PFD, the uh, multifunctional display and the engine gauges. So we are uh, focused on the autopilot panel here. So the autopilot panel, these are the three uh, main buttons. Also, okay, the four, of course, is not that important. The three main settings that you got to know is the speed, the heading and the altitude. Okay, so uh, before you take off, we make sure we set the speed to our cruising speed, which would be 250 knots initially. So we'll just set that up right here. I'll explain to you why uh, why I'm setting it up right now, uh, because this doesn't affect your air p a a aircraft right now. It doesn't change anything because the autopilot is turned off. Uh, let's set our initial heading to our takeoff runway heading. So we'll be taking off from runway 27, and it has a heading of 276 degrees. So let's, uh, okay, there we go. And then a course heading will be our landing heading, uh, which uh, in this case, it's going to be a runway 8 having a, uh, the, uh, heading of the 7, 8 degrees. So we'll just scroll that. There we go. And our altitude will be, initially we'll climb to 4,000. We'll have to climb higher for, uh, for to get gain more speed. So now our air autopilot is set. Now let me explain what each of them does. Speed, obviously, you know it holds your speed. The heading, obviously, you know it uh, maintains your heading. The course is simply it indicates the aircraft uh, path. What do you say? A path uh, identifying system to say that you want to eventually go to the heading seven zero uh, seven eight. So it will automatically uh, set your plot your path points accordingly. It, regardless of whichever heading you turn, your path points will be optimized to reach that uh, course. That doesn't guarantee that you'll reach your runway. It just guarantees that you'll reach your head, uh, destination heading much easier. Okay, then the altitude, obviously you know the altitude. Now, there are a few gray buttons here. Uh, these four buttons you don't have to um, consider. These two, the flight direction, the ILS buttons uh, are important. Not that much though, they're pure, therefore uh, purely the display pur purposes. These two, the approach button and the localizer button, we will get to it when we are about to land. The autopilot and the auto thrust button or the auto throttle. The autopilot button is turned off right now. These, the speed, I'm uh, sorry, the heading the and the on the altitude are both controlled by the autopilot. I, ca I cannot, I, I even if I click this right now, it's not going to affect anything because the autopilot is turned off. So I better, cl uh, uh, even if, th and if these are not selected the o and the autopilot turned on, nothing's gonna change. That uh, warning symbol means that you turn turned off the autopilot. It is to alert the pilot that the aircraft is in manual control and he should, he or she should maintain the yoke at a decent angle. The auto thrust button is given uh, separately because regardless of whether the autopilot is turned on or not the auto thrust button is uh, uh, has complete control over your speed so right now I, I have not set my speed if I set hold it at 250 knots I cannot click on it right now see because the auto thrust is off once I arm the auto thrust I can click on this and you can see the engine starts to spool off so I'll just turn it off for safety measures I don't want to uh, go off right now 
So, okay, uh, I better uh, bring my thrust back to idle as well. There we go. So, now that we have set, uh, set our autopilot, let's taxi on to runway 27. While we're taxiing onto the runway, let me tell you guys about a multiplayer server. Uh, real, I use a real FSX server. I'll leave the IP address to the multiplayer server on, down in the, in the description below. So see, basically we everybody knows uh, uh, FSX Team Edition and uh, everybody knows VATSIM. So these are two extremes, right? In FSX Team Edition there is no restriction, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can crash a plane onto others plane, you can take a hot air balloon and uh, do a vertical or tie at uh, 600 knots. Uh, and VATSIM is the direct opposite, means everything is uh, strict and formal and you have to follow the rules otherwise you'll get banned. Uh, but real FSX server provides both. You can have the strict, uh, rather than uh, using the term strict, you can have the disciplined, structured uh, aviation channels, as, as, as well as you can just uh, hang around in the lobby and do whatever you want, as long as you don't affect other people who are flying the plane, or flying the craft, or being ATC. So uh, basically they provide materials to uh, study if you want to further your skills and get some badges and cool gifts or uh, you could just fly on your own. Uh, you can be uh, either be a pilot or, or an acting ATC. So I'll make, to, I'll make sure to leave the link down in the description below guys. Uh, join Real FSX server, it's a cool place to be. Okay, we got maximum runway here. Uh, Robert, Romy Kilo, Mike 235 ready for takeoff from runway 27, clear the runway. So assuming we got takeoff clearance, uh, let's uh, first start pulling up the engines up to 50% by holding the brakes and increasing the thrust. Lowering down two notches of flaps. Full thrust. Pass 18 knots. V1 Rotate Positive rate, gear up Reducing thrust to maintain 250 knots There's the overspeed uh, warning or the flap warning Flaps up Now you guys can see how difficult it is to maintain your speed, your thrust, your altitude, your attitude, everything. So time to switch on the autopilot. Before you switch on, make sure your plane is stable climbing. You don't want it to wobble because you're going to be losing your joystick mode by pressing Ctrl plus Y into mouse mode. Now we are in the mouse mode. Let's switch on auto thrust and maintain that speed. Let's switch on the autopilot to maintain the altitude and our heading. Okay, now uh, the autopilot is taking care of everything. It's main monitoring our altitude, which is a bit too high right now, I believe. It it'll oh, it switched off. Let's switch it on. There we go. The autopilot is now going to descend on to four thousand feet. You know what? Let's go up a uh, notch. Let's uh, keep uh, ascending to flight level one five zero. That is fifteen thousand feet. Orbit Romeo two three five uh, ascending to flight level one five zero. Now, uh, now you guys know how to take off and then switch, uh, switch to autopilot. Now let's use our GPS to navigate to their destination airport. Suppose you did not file an IFR plan and you don't have any information about the airport. Okay, you, the, only, uh, the minimum thing that you should know is the airport's ICAO code. Just like for Princess Juliana, it was Tango, November, Charlie, Mike. Uh, we're gonna go to Louis Munoz Marin International, which is having a code of Tango, Juliet, Sierra, Juliet. So let's uh, go to the GPS by pressing the Shift plus 3 button. Now since I had filed an IFR plan, there's going to be a magenta line, but you guys don't have to, I'll, I'll tell you uh, from scratch on what to do. Suppose you don't have the magenta line, you want to know which direction you got to go. Just click on direct to waypoint, waypoint page and you see this, this, uh, this box is highlighted. 
you scroll on the small dial here on to the left now you see the each letter letter is highlighted just type in the ICAO code from the keyboard there you see Luis Munoz Marin International then use the large dial and scroll down oops, so, oops sorry you just press enter to highlight and then uh, scroll down using the large dial to all the way to activate <laughs> press enter now you, now you see the magenta line start from the aircraft and we got to go at the heading of 290 so let's uh, switch to the uh, autopilot and turn our heading to 290 there we go and since uh, I believe our altitude is now about 10,000 feet we can increase our speed to around 300 knots now our aircraft is going to turn to 290 degrees now this procedure this button you can do it anytime suppose you straight off course your Magenta line. Just press it again, and you'll get the new vectors. There we go. We still now we gotta maintain like two nine two two nine five degrees maybe. There we go. Now we are right on course to the airport. We have around hundred and uh, fifty mi nautical miles or hundred sixty. The display is a bit there. Okay, hundred forty nine nautical miles. Expected uh, time on route is twenty eight minutes, and. Uh, that's it. How that's how you navigate using the GPS, guys. You look at the magenta line and you change your heading. Now, guys, since uh, it's gonna take some time for us to reach the airport, let me uh, get you guys familiarized with the radio stack. Just press Shift plus two to bring the radio stack up. This is the radio stack for the uh, Airbus A321 over here. You notice uh, two uh, uh, displays over here. One is the active frequency, the other is the standby frequency. The active frequency is the frequency which to which you are listening to and communicating to. The standby frequency is just like a notepad. You just uh, set the frequency there uh, or you type in the frequency here before you press the switch button and this goes to the active frequency. So suppose I want to switch to uh, the uh, Louis Munoz Marin International Tower frequency which is 1320.05 so I'll just uh, uh, change the frequencies over here the center dial uh, shifts the uh, uh, values after the decimal point the larger dial uh, shifts the uh, frequency before the decimal point so, so 132.05 sorry about that 132.05 there we go now when I press the switch button this becomes the active frequency Okay, now when I reach the uh, Louis Menos Manor International Airport, I can easily communicate to them by simply switching to the frequency and starting to talk. So for the now, we'll maintain uh, 128.3. Now you see COM1 and COM2 here. You, you can have two sets of these frequencies. Uh, suppose you want to uh, have four frequencies uh, handy. You keep one in the active, keep one on standby, which, which is the frequency you would want to switch to. You would keep another one active on COM2 and uh, another one on standby. Now the question comes, I have two actives on two different COMs. So only one COM active frequency will be the one you'll be talking to. But you can hear on both uh, COMs if you click on the call button over here. The whichever call button you click on, you can talk to that. The other call button will be only on receive mode. The next part comes the nav, bu uh, the nav buttons the nav frequencies which we'll explain to you in a bit so now you guys know how to take off convert to uh, switch to the autopilot uh, use the GPS to navigate and uh, you guys know how to tune into different frequencies in the radio communication now the exciting part the auto landing so an auto landing is a very very useful technique and it's not that difficult guys especially since you're in a simulator and there are you're not risking the lives of uh, actual souls on board uh, except uh, your dignity and your uh, what do you say um, respect self respect so the, how do you use the ILS the ILS stands for instrument landing system so basically you're going to use your autopilot or the instruments to land uh, lined up on the runway at the correct descent speed with the, at the correct velo velocity so the buttons you got to note down is the nav slash gps button the ILS button uh, the approach button and the localizer button and the radio stack now before we decide to switch to ILS first we have to know the ILS frequency of the airport 
So suppose this you're gonna have to find out beforehand before you reach the airport. You click on map over here. In the map, you can you'll have to scroll all the way to your destination airport. Zoom in and you'll see the runways. Just click on one runway and you'll get the ILS frequency, the runway heading and the runway number. So for ILS runway 10, you'll have a frequency of 109.7 and 101 is the heading of the, of the runway. The other runway will be ILS 8, which is 110.3 and uh, has a heading of 78 degrees. I already have all these details uh, noted down, which is a good technique if you want to have, be a good pilot. Now once you have the frequencies on hand, open the radio communications tag by pressing shift 2. Now switch to the nav one com, and here we're gonna set up our runway. We have two runways, right? Runways eight and ten. So we're gonna set up the uh, set up the ILS frequency for runway eight. So runway eight has an ILS frequency of one one zero point three. So we're gonna go to the standby and switch to and tune to one one eight point three. One one eight. Sorry, is it one zero eight? No. Sorry, it's one one zero. 110.3. 110.3 is the ILS frequency for runway 08. We'll switch it to active. Now nav 1 is set. Nav 2. Nav 2, we're going to set it uh, for runway 10, which is 109.7. 109.7. There we go. Oops. We're going to switch it to active. So nav 1 and nav 2 are active. Good. Now. We're gonna click on call nav1 and call nav2. This means now we'll be listening to both nav1 and nav2. So when the aircraft is within range of the ILS vectors or the ILS equipment on the runway, uh, the aircraft will pick up the frequency and will, it will sh uh, le let you s it will sound a beep, which uh, tells you that it's within range of the ILS. Okay, so till then you'll ha you cannot do anything. You'll have to wait till you reach the ILS. Just maintain your navigation by looking at the GPS and make sure you, you, you line up to the runway the best as you can by change, turning your headings, monitoring your velocity. So guys, that's it for part one of this video. Where we covered uh, how to take off, how to set your autopilot, how to you navigate using GPS, how to set your ILS frequency. In the part two, we are going to discuss completely about how to perform an automatic landing. See you guys there.